Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to Minecraft RTX Survival. I hope you guys are having a good day. So we're back on the RTX world, and today I think we're going to focus on making some connections around the world. Nether connections, because the desert in this world, as we've seen in previous episodes, is a really long way away. We're talking like thousands of blocks away in a southly direction, and I really need to get a nether connection out there so I can bring back... A bunch of stuff that I'm going to need. Sand, for example. We need a fair amount of sand. We're going to be messing around with glass a lot in this series so we can do cool lighting effects and so I think I'm going to need a direct connection to that desert so I can bring a lot of that stuff back. Not only that, but a mesa is very close by. We want to bring some colored terracotta, some various different colors of that are going to be useful for some of the builds that I have planned around here and Slowly but surely, we're going to start transforming this area. I still want to keep my castle on the hill idea, but I think we might end up doing a bit of terraforming. We're going to need to gather lots of materials for that, and I think having connections far and wide throughout the world is going to be a good idea. So, I'm going to raid my storage chests, and around here I've started moving a lot of these storage chests inside the house because... It's just the best place to keep them for the time being. I don't have to stay out here in the open. So down the end of this corridor and through the door at the end, I have a bunch of storage where I've been putting a bunch of the stuff I will need. We only have four obsidian right now, so I'm going to need to go and claim a little bit more of that from the world around me or maybe even head back into the nether and see if I can pick some up from some ruined portals or chests here and there. But I think the main thing we're going to do today is make a nether portal connection to that desert and start to link things up in a sort of temporary nether hub. And we might be able to do some really cool stuff in the nether later. So I think for now I'm going to hold off on designing a more permanent nether hub until I've got the materials to do that. But I think heading back down into my branch mine is going to be the safest way to gather some obsidian. So I'll probably start taking out some of these blocks so it's a little bit more pleasant of a trip down here. But I think we're going to get some obsidian. Yeah, basically right as we end up at the bottom here, there are lava pools and stuff like that around that I can probably just tear apart for the obsidian that I need for these portals. So we got 28 obsidian, that's enough for two full frame portals, and I might stick around in the branch mine a little bit later and get myself some more diamonds because I'm running precious low on those and would really like to get some upgrades done. We don't have any mending yet, and that's something that I could just fish for or I could go and find some villagers who will eventually trade me a mending book, but right now I want to make a bit more progress in the world before we really get Get settled in and get our permanent equipment on the go. This stuff has projectile protection and thorns and some of the enchantments that I prefer not to have. So I'm thinking maybe we do a little bit more mining, a little bit more enchanting, and then hopefully we end up with some gear that can be more permanent. But man, it is nice coming back to this house at night and having that uplight around the doors giving a different kind of light to the area. I really like the way we put some of this stuff together already. I also like my cozy little living room, which is where I've been doing most of my sleeping. <laughs> it's a day bed, but it's also kind of a night bed as well. So for this trip back to the nether, I'm going to cast basically everything that I don't need into these chests, thinking about slabs and sticks and all of this extra stuff. I will keep a couple of supplies on me, but I'm slowly but surely figuring out how I want to organize things. And I think in the long term, what I would like to have is a series of storage chests that is organized more by color than by material. Typically when I play Minecraft, I organize everything by different types of material. I'll put some of the precious stuff in here. I'll put the nether stuff in here and obviously like various landscape blocks, dirt and stone and that sort of stuff in different chests. But I think what I'm going to do is eventually have a bunch of building blocks sorted by color so that when we focus on builds later on in this series, we can really start to use the color as kind of the, the first thing we think about. Like one of the things I want to do later on in this series is build up a cyberpunk style modern city. It seems like the thing to do, especially with cyberpunk being at the forefront of everybody's minds lately, and I want to make sure that I have all of the materials I want to to do that so that if I say I want to build a shop with like a neon pink storefront, I can just go and immediately find all of my neon pink materials. Here we go, here's what I'm looking for. Got the flint and steel right there, and that's what we're going to take with us to the desert. So did I just put the boat away? I will actually need the boat. I was thinking I was going to go through the nether, but then I don't have the connection there yet, so I don't know where we're going to come out. There we go, got the boat with me, and let's head off in the direction of the desert. We're going to need to head south for a couple of thousand blocks, but I think I remember the way. We're actually going to make a pit stop on the way to our destination because I cannot resist this over here. There's a portal right next to, I think, a tiger village. 
and I really want to check this out because the portal itself is one of those huge ones that generates naturally as a ruined portal in the world, but I think being right next to a village makes it quite a good target for repairing this portal and using it as part of our nether hub connections. Not only that, but with the sun going down, I would really rather find a bed, and I think I should be able to find one waiting for me in this village somewhere. So I'm gonna hop over the ridge, and as we can see, the portal there, pretty massive, and I wonder if I have enough obsidian on me to repair it while leaving enough for another portal. I think I should do. Let's hop over here, and we've got at least one more in the chest, so that's always handy. Now let's see, where was the village? I think it might have been over here, yes, in this valley, you can sort of see the chimneys and the houses poking through the tree line. Let's see if we can find ourselves a bed for the night. Well, it looks like this is an abandoned village. I'm not seeing anything in the way of villagers. There are cobwebs basically everywhere, but I'm wondering if this one will still have a bed where I can stay for the night. And oh, <laughs> this is a little bit atmospheric, isn't it? Let's see if there's anything around here bed-wise or if they've just abandoned all the beds as well. That red glass, oh my days. And oh yeah, there's a lava pit in the middle of this village. No wonder they abandoned it, all right. But there we go, we've got a bed for the night, fantastic. And oh, the sunset, <laughs> the sunset through the red glass is something else, isn't it? That's something very special. Well, despite the fact that the roof is a little bit drafty, we can get our bed for the night here and in the morning, yeah, that's that's looking kind of creepy. Despite the fact that this village has no villagers, it does have a wandering trader who really isn't selling anything too special, but, you know, getting some glowstone, some gunpowder and stuff might be all right if we needed it. But for now, I'm fine. I don't have any emeralds on me. Unfortunately, the population of this village is long gone and unable to lend any themselves. What I will do, though, <laughs> while I'm here, is raid this house for the lectern, which is actually going to be a really useful profession block to bring with us and... Doesn't mean we have to craft one, I suppose. And then I'm going to take these bookshelves from up here as well, because bookshelves can be a little bit time-consuming to craft, and oh, I'm now stuck in a cobweb. Yeah, as I was saying before that cobweb interrupted me, bookshelves are a little bit of a pain to craft, and I think having a few lectins and bookshelves around is going to mean we can do a little bit more trading with librarians once we can set one of those up. So maybe not worth repairing this portal after all. I was hoping that it was going to make sense to have one right next to a village, but it seems like this village ain't really worth keeping. I will take a bed with me though, and a couple of these workstations. Taking those ain't gonna hurt anybody, and blast furnaces also take a lot of iron to craft, so I think I will bring a few of those with me, and then leave the wandering trader to wander and trade as he may. I'm gonna head off towards that desert and make our first nether portal connection. After a long trip south, the desert comes into view, and here actually is a village that I know is thriving out here. There's lots and lots of buildings here, and there were many villages last time I was in the area, so hopefully this will be a place that we can also use as a trading outpost until we start bringing some villagers closer to the base. And I think there are a few other villages dotted around, but this one just seems to have a pretty large population, and I've noticed that sometimes villagers only generate in smaller numbers in those smaller villages, whereas here we've got plenty to choose from. There's also a really big ravine out the front here <laughs> that goes all the way down to lava levels, so I need to be a little bit careful about that. A couple of village cats around, and some villagers, some of whom may have professions already. This guy over here is a farmer that we already traded with, but there are going to be a couple around who need professions at at this stage. We've got probably got a couple of unemployed ones. We've got a butcher there. This guy looks like a leather worker. Very nice. They've all kind of got the same outfits and I think there is something going on with the texture pack right now that is preventing them from really showing up with full professions but this guy was a librarian. We've met him before already and we could start trading paper and books if we want to grow those in the nearby area. We've got a cleric here as well who can trade rotten flesh. We have a couple of other weaponsmiths and stuff like that. That sounds great. I am hearing a couple of zombie noises here and there but I think those are mostly going to be below ground. Let's see what the blacksmith has to offer. A couple of gold ingots and an iron sword. Nothing too special, but I'll take the gold. Might as well take the gold. And yeah, I love the fact that the blacksmith's forge actually has iron bars in here reflecting the sky and the lava. That's super nice looking. Uh oh, sounds like we do have a zombie nearby. Where is that one? It sounds like it is burning in the sun. Ah, we have... A little cave down here, I see. Well, I should just be able to block that off. We'll put some of my spruce planks in there, and hopefully that zombie won't be bothering the villagers anymore. 
Yeah, just look at the village population here. This is a thriving community and it seems like an ideal place really to set up our first nether portal. I'm going to go a little way away from the village just because I want to be able to get out of the nether portal and not have any mobs around here if I turn up during night time. I want to make sure that the mobs aren't going to attack the village population so I should probably get a little way away here. Let's say somewhere around here on the shore seems like a good place to do it and we'll pop down our nether portal and this is where we're going to create our first nether hub connection in this world. So in terms of the x-axis we are pretty much dead on with my spawn area more or less but in terms of the z-axis we are quite the distance away. So this trip back through the nether is potentially going to be a difficult one. We're at sea level right now. Let's see where we end up when it creates a portal in the nether. Oh boy. All right. That is right on the edge of an island there. And it looks like we're going to need to make some bridges, but we're in a nether wastes biome. So this is potentially best case scenario. I didn't want to turn up in a, uh, a soul sand valley or a basalt delta because those are going to be a little bit more treacherous to traverse. But I think no, here here, we can probably set up a nice easy path back and I think we're going to have to head in that direction in order to make it back to our central portal. So we've got a little bit of bridging and a little bit of digging to do, but it looks like we should be able to make it back in one piece. Having said that, I haven't really brought any of the materials I want to use for the nether hub. We need to have something ghast proof, so I'm going to make the tunnels out of stone initially, which is going to mean heading back to my main base and getting some materials anyway. Well, the good news is that traveling south actually takes me through the crimson forest here, which is kind of the best case scenario since the other directions involve a lot more bridging, a soul sand valley, and some lava lakes, whereas this way, up until we get to that nether portal, should be relatively clear. So I brought a ton of natural stone with me that I've either silk touched or smelted, and what we're going to do is just make a direct line in this direction until we get to that lava lake, and then we just have to divert a little bit to our right, and we should find ourselves back at the portal I just made. So wish me luck. I'll see you guys on the other side. Hey folks, welcome back. So you find me in a position I'm really not all that keen on, bridging out across a lava lake with ghast noises pretty much all around me. But thanks to the fact that bedrock bridging actually allows you to place blocks in front of you as you walk forward. Obviously I'm crouching right now, but the rest of the time I was able to walk forward without having to crouch. Sometimes it worked out for me, sometimes it didn't, but largely speaking, I have found this a relatively chill activity and a lot of the areas of the nether we've gone through required a little bit more digging than that so we're mostly okay here and i can see of course the nether portal over there to my right which means we should hopefully be able to make it over there fairly soon i'm probably going to take a right about here and then bridge up to this and then staircase up to the portal itself and from there we can figure out what we're going to do with a tunnel but yeah i really don't feel like having ghasts around here thank you Luckily, I've gotten fairly good at bullseyeing those ghasts, and if we just double up on the width of the path here, I feel like I'll be a little bit happier with this. Being able to staircase like this is actually really, really nice. Being able to place stuff like that without having to do all of the turning around and whatnot definitely works in my favor. Now all we need to do is create another very brief path to the land, and oh, I can breathe a sigh of relief. Oh... There it is. <laughs> there is our pathway out through the nether, looking well lit at least, but that's pretty much all I can say in its favor at this point. Okay, so after a little bit of time spent over at that desert village, I actually decided to get some trading on the go with some of the villagers there, and after a few re-rolls of a librarian trade, I finally was able to get myself a couple of mending books. There's a villager over there who will sell me a mending book for 34 emeralds, which is actually quite expensive as far as mending books go, but I didn't want to just spend time re-rolling the mending trade forever, so eventually I traded a bunch of sticks to some fletchers and got the books I need. I think the first ones are probably going to go on my pickaxes, although I might see if I can get efficiency on there as well, so I'm not going to add mending to them quite yet. And I have done a little bit more mining. We did that on a live stream, which is archived now on my Pixel VODs channel, if you want to go and check that out and see that I didn't just do some mining off camera. But now, 
I am a little bit stuck because I want to see if I can get some better prices out of the villagers and make the future mending trades a little bit less painful. And for that, we will need to get some potion brewing on the go so we can get weakness potions. Alternatively, as it was pointed out to me earlier, I could get some weakness arrows from trading with the Fletchers, but the chances of that are relatively slim and I would much rather get something like potions because that of course means we would find a nether fortress. So I actually went out in search of a nether fortress, realizing that it was probably going to take a little bit more exploration, I decided to get myself a warped fungus on a stick and bring a saddle back here from home and that would allow me to saddle up a strider and go looking in lava lakes. If it's your first time looking for a nether fortress and you simply can't find one in the surrounding area, if you're working with the version of Minecraft that I am, like 1.16, you are gonna want to have a strider around because striders will let you across all of those lava lakes and explore a much wider area with much less fuss. And the only direction I haven't really explored since I've been in the nether is in this direction because that was where we found the basalt delta. So I'm thinking maybe we head out in that direction and see if we can go down to a lava lake a little bit further down in the world that's going to get us easy access to striders. So we'll hop on down here. We'll find our way down to one of these more easily accessible lava lakes and will try and attract the attention of a strider and hopefully these lakes will connect to larger lakes in the area. Now there are a couple of striders out there further out in the lake but that's a little bit too far away for them to be attracted in by the warped fungus on a stick. I am just going to hold on to this one though in the hopes that one of the striders that's approached a little bit closer to the shore is going to notice them and I'll probably start hearing that chirpy strider voice coming along fairly soon. Everything down by the edge of these lava lakes is so bright though, it is almost blindingly bright. That white hot lava is just a lot to handle sometimes. So I'm going to make my way around the outside of here, probably just dodge around here until I can find a slightly flatter place to stand and maybe we'll be able to lure in a strider from the lava lake over here. Since we are getting into Soul Sand Valley territory, I do see a couple of skeletons hanging around, but maybe we can, yeah, knock that one into lava. <laughs> there we go. And it looks like over here we've got a little strider family. Well, I'm going to have to borrow one of these. If I dangle this warp fungus on a stick near enough to the edge of the lava, hopefully we'll catch the attention of this strider. And yes, it bobbles merrily over to say hi. Well, this one looks like one we can pop a saddle on. We'll saddle up with our warp fungus on a stick. And we are off. I've also brought myself a bunch of fire resist potions, which I was able to trade from piglins, and that's going to get us a nice head start here into the nether. And we're off to the races. Our strider making a good time, and hopefully this will connect out to some larger lava lakes nearby. Oh, look at the tiny baby striders, how cute they all look. And maybe we can wander our way around some of these. Nope, okay, it looks like we are in a fairly shallow basalt lake here. Oh well. Unfortunately, it looks like this lake here is a little bit landlocked and I really don't want to tangle with the ghasts more than I have to, so I'm just spamming right click and hoping we can make our way around to an area that is a little bit more open. Looking at all this lava from inside a crimson forest biome is just blindingly bright though. All of that red. Every time I open my inventory, it looks kind of blue by comparison almost. Well, let's see if we can make our way around here. Looks like we might be able to hop through to a couple of other lava lakes, but you know what? This isn't looking super promising at this point. We might actually have to start looking a little further afield. Well, our first little Strider expedition didn't go super well, and yes, unfortunately, I did have to kill the Strider just to get my saddle back, but let's see if the second lava ocean that we've encountered so far fares any better. Once again, we'll have to get the warp fungus on a stick out and grab a saddle so that we can saddle up a strider and it looks like once again that one is a little far out but maybe we can bridge out towards it with some netherrack in order to get its attention with the warp fungus. Over here buddy, over here, there we go, yes. All right, so we have another strider queued up and ready to roll. Let's get that warp fungus on a stick and let's see where we can go from here. Once again, basalt delta over in this direction, so let's see if we can avoid that and maybe make our way towards a nether fortress over this way, perhaps. Once again, that really, really red biome fog in the uh, forest here. And every time, every time something like this turns up where there's like a pillar of netherrack, I always get my hopes up a little bit. If it's a, uh, a bastion, then we'll see a few of those around as well. Need to take out the ghasts as we go to make sure we don't have any unpleasant surprises 
but we're also attracting a few other striders. We're getting a little convoy going as we're rolling around here in the Basalt Delta. Well, this is pretty unbelievable. I actually doubled back around and found myself staring at a bastion. I'm pretty sure this is one of the housing type of bastions or maybe a bridge bastion. Kind of difficult to say from where we are here, but I'm going to take the coordinates of this one and then I will be back for that a little bit later because this is actually surprisingly close to the area where I have the nether portal that takes us out to the desert. So just a little bit more exploration in that direction and we should hopefully find our way back to that bastion nice and easily. But here I was trying to track down a nether fortress and I have only been finding bastions so far. We've got a couple of those further out from the original treasure bastion that I raided in the last episode and it looks like nether fortresses are fewer and further between than I was hoping for. Oh, finally! After much searching, we have encountered the legs of a nether fortress. And this right here... Whoa! Alright, alright, magma cubes, calm down. This is why I want to avoid basalt delta, because magma cubes are like death from above in some of these places. They just drop down from the the highest heights there, but this is what I was hoping for. Navigating by Strider, you just find the legs of a nether fortress coming down from the ceiling there, and so much easier to find them if you know how to look. So I'm going to try and dispose of a couple of these magma cubes before I get absolutely swarmed by them, but they are so much springier on Bedrock Edition, and when they split up like that, they move way faster for a couple of jumps before they start to calm down. And we don't have a sweeping edge to take care of them, so just having to deflect them where I can, bounce off them and spam click them with the sword. But there we go, friends. Our nether fortress has been located at 637, 675, and not a moment too soon. I have been itching to find one of these places track down some blazes and hopefully get the resources we need to start potion brewing. But I think we're going to do that in the next episode. Sorry to cut it short right here, but I feel like this is something best reserved for a full episode of its own. So folks, that is going to be where we leave it for this episode of Minecraft RTX Survival. See you next time for exploration of this nether fortress. Thank you so much for watching. My name has been Pixelrifts. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.